Today is, as usual, another exciting topic in the world of print. Let's talk about how to set up your artwork for foiling in Adobe Illustrator. That's it, you heard right. I am today going to talk to you about how to set up artwork for falling in Adobe Illustrator and as a printer I've got to admit this is such an exciting topic because if you've never done anything before with print adding a foil to it massively changes the way that it feels, how the, the appearance of it and it just makes it that extra level of premium high quality and wow, it's just amazing I love doing foiling but as a printer I see examples of good bits of artwork where it's been set up correctly and I also get where people don't fully understand how you're supposed to set up the artwork so today I thought why not let's actually talk about how to set up artwork for foiling by this I mean this is foil on a paper print so whether this be an art print a business card a greetings card the method of foiling different substrates such as leather or any sort of different material or fabric might be different to this. Being from a paper print background, this is how I would do it. If you do want to jump straight to the tutorial, I will timestamp it somewhere here or here and that is where the tutorial starts. Before I show you how to set up artwork for foiling, I thought I'd give a brief overview of the two different methods of foiling when it's foil on paper. These are digital foiling and hot foiling. Digital foiling is comparatively a new method of foiling compared to hot foiling. So what you need for this is you need a laser printer a laminator if you want print on there as well and you need the special type of digital foil. The drawbacks of digital foil is that there are only a handful of different colours and metals that you can use for it. So there's only like four or five different types of foil that you can use with the digital foiler but these do cover your silvers, your gold, your coppers, your rose gold but there's no out there neon colours or anything more specific. You're sort of limited to those colours. The biggest problem I would say with digital foiling is the limitations when you want to add a foil to a print. So because of the foil bonding to every bit of toner on the page, what happens is that you have to put a laminate in between your print and foil. So this would be, you would have your stock, then you do your colour print, then you'd laminate it, and then you do your overprint, and then you'd foil it. So if you was trying to do your colour print and then you wanted the foil directly on top of the print, if you was to then run that through the foiler, it would just foil the entire sheet, and obviously you don't want that. So by adding the laminate, it adds that barrier that stops the foil bonding to absolutely everything. Only the foil elements that you've put on top of the laminate, if that makes any sense. <laughs> So you're probably thinking, okay, that's great, but now I can only add a digital foil onto a laminated stock. This isn't necessarily true. This only applies if you want a foil on top of a print. If you was to design your artwork and make it so that it's a white background or a cream background, which is the color of the stock itself, you could add the foil and have your print elements go around it. Again, another drawback of this is that you would never get a digital foil just because of the nature of digital print. You'd never get it to line up next to something perfectly. So for example, if you wanted to foil some words in a sentence, I'd never recommend that because let's say if you've got one word in a sentence on a sheet and you wanted that one word for it could shift up to three millimeters in any direction. I have an example to show you exactly what I mean with this. I have got a design that we're going to be looking at in a bit and I have foiled it. So as you can see there are no key elements that are lining up on this. It's all foiled and nice and it's my favorite crocodile design, but the stars and everything at the top and the circles, nothing is key to line up on there. That is a perfect example of a card on an uncoated cream Jeff Smith board that is foiled. That is how I'd recommend doing it. This might not be a deal breaker for this, but with digital foiling, you don't get the impression into the stock that you get with hot foiling. Because there's no male and female or just a male die pushing into the stock to press the foil onto it, you don't get that little impression into the stock. Again, 
if you've never seen hot foiling before, you might not even be bothered by this at all. It does sound like I'm saying that this method of foiling is no good. It really is a nice finish, like with this card. It's a beautiful card, it's a lovely finish, and I've never had any complaints with it. However, the benefits of digital foiling are that it's cheap compared to hot foiling. It is so cheap, there's no plate to get set up, there's no, no additional costs really as long as you've set up your artwork correctly. Another benefit is that you can do really low quantities on this. As with hot foiling, it, you, you're going to be in the thousands, you're going to have to have thousands of the same design printed. As with digital foiling, you could get 10 printed and it, you know, it wouldn't be ridiculously expensive to have done. Now let's talk about hot foiling. Hot foiling is the traditional method of adding foil to paper or card or board. The way that hot foiling works is that you have a plate made and a combination of heat and pressure with a foil when forced into a cardstock means that it's impressed into the board. And the side effect of that is that you get an absolutely beautiful impression into the stock, very similar to embossing. And the reason for that is the process minus the heat in the foil is very similar. It's a very similar process to embossing. And this can be done onto almost any stock. There's no drawback on stock. It doesn't need to be smooth. It doesn't need to go through a printer necessarily. So it can be a really thick board with this. And the variety of different foil colours, finishes that you can get with hot foiling is huge. There's hundreds, thousands of different finishes that you can have. Typically, the best results with hot foiling are with a really thick uncoated board that can really create that impression into the stock. Something such as GF Smith Colour Plan is a perfect example. It's just perfect for that. And even though obviously Colour Plan does come with an expensive ticket with it, it is an expensive board, there's good reason for that because it works so well with that method of foiling. The biggest drawback with hot foiling, I would have to say, hands down, is the cost. It just costs so much to do that finish. And obviously that means that this is not for every customer. If you're a designer and you're trying to sell print to a customer, I've been there, I know what people try to do. You try and put the most beautiful finishes on everything and the reality is, just normally for the cost of the plate, most customers are put off. So just bear that in mind if you are ever actually setting up hot foiling or a foil job, that a foil plate could cost between, depending on the size, a plate can be from sort of 80 pounds to 200 pounds, depending on the material, the size of your print, how much foil you're having on there. And that's just for the plate, not the actual job itself. Bear that in mind if you're just talking to a client about how fancy they want their business cards or invites or anything like that. But if your client comes back and says, yeah, that seems fine. If they're happy to pay two pound, two pound 50 for a business card, go for it. Honestly, if you've got a reasonable budget, this is the best avenues, the best way of getting top quality, the best quality print with a foil. So let's get started. Today we are gonna be setting up artwork and saving it for foil. So this is printed items that have foil on there. And the two examples I'm gonna show you on the screen are firstly, the card I showed you earlier, which is my favorite crocodile card. This is digital foil on an uncoated board. And also my space card. This is a laminated card, so the foil goes on top of the print. These are the two cards I'm gonna show you today. These are with digital foil. This process is very similar as it would be if you were setting up for hot foil. However, I would always get in touch with the printer before setting up your artwork if you're doing hot foil because with digital foiling, I say everything with foil has to be set to 100% black. As with hot foiling, it might be that you need to set it as magenta or a spot color or a different key color. So if you have found a printer that does hot foiling, have a chat with them, get all those colors, get all the details off them that they need to set up artwork for foil. But the process of splitting up the layers, as we'll do now, is exactly the same. Right, let's jump into Illustrator. As you can see on the screen, I've got my favorite crocodile card. So the key part to getting this right is all in your layers panel. So in my version of Illustrator, I'm on the Essentials Classic view and the layers panel is in the bottom right hand corner of the screen. So as you can see, I've got a print layer and I've got a foil layer. So this mainly comes into play when you're trying to save the file. It makes it a lot easier. So this is gonna sound really basic because believe it or not, it is easy to do this. All of your CMYK color elements, if you've got any, 
go in that print layer. And I can show you that by hiding the visibility of it. As you can see, when I've turned that layer off, all I've got on the screen now is the parts that I want foiled. So if I turn that back on and turn off the foil layer, the visibility of that layer, all I've got on there is the CMYK elements. So, turn that back on, there's the card. I have a lot of people who set up artwork and put a gold effect on there, or they'll put the, the effect of the foil on there. However nice this looks, it's not a necessity. You really don't need to do this, but if you want to, to show the printer a proof of this is where the foil will be, do that, but it's not a necessity if you don't know how to do it or you don't want to do it. So this is nice and simple. As I've mentioned already, the key element to this is the fact that it's on an uncoated board. So with an uncoated board and you're adding foil with digital foiling, don't try and align anything with any key elements. So you wouldn't want to align any text in a line or you wouldn't want these stars to line up inside of a colour outline or a stroke. It will never line up. So what you do is you have to cater the design for the fact that it won't line up. It could shift three millimetres. So looking at favourite crocodile design, if this was to shift three millimetres in any direction, it wouldn't matter. That's something to bear in mind. As I mentioned, with all foil elements, don't need to pick any particular spot colour with digital foil. All you need to do is make sure that it's set to 100% black. That's all you need to do. And also, double check the fact that you are working in CMYK. That's all you need to check. So let's just have a look at the Galactic card, because this is a bit more complex if you're having your printing done via digital foiling. So as you can see here, I have got a dark blue background with some illustrations on there as well. I really love this design. If you watch the beginning of the video, you'll know that you have to have a laminate to break up the colour when you're foiling with digital foil. So this card has to be laminated if it's digital foiled. Like before with the other design, it's exactly the same. So I turn off the foil layer and all of the foil elements go. I haven't put them in a gold effect because I don't need to. But as you can see, there's no sign of that foil element on that CMYK file. You don't need it. So keep life simple by just having all of the print elements on the print layer and all of the foil elements on the foil layer. Nice and simple. So let's talk about saving your file. You've got everything ready. You've got your bleed areas, you've got your colour, you know you've got to add a laminate if you have in the full colour background, and you've got your layers. So when you're saving your file for foiling, I recommend doing the following. You need to save three PDFs. The one being your foil layer, the other one being your print layer, and then also a guide layer, like a test layer, which would be save your PDF with both foil and print layers on there. Again, this doesn't need to have any special foil effects on there. All you need to put is in the file name, just say foil guide in there. Nice and simple, it will really help the printer. When you send this off to your printer, you should have already discussed what size the print will be, what foils you'll be using, what additional finishing you'll be using, and also what stock you're having it on. You are good to go. This is how simple it is. And as I always say, save your working files before you've outlined anything. Always save a working file. So there we have it. That is how you set up and save your PDFs for foil on paper and card stocks. It's not as difficult as you think it would be. And I think a lot of people over egg out how difficult it is. And it really is simple. As long as you've got your layers and you save the PDFs in the right colors and everything like that, you're pretty much good to go. Thank you ever so much for watching the video. It really does mean the world. And I'm aware I've had some new followers in the past few weeks and it, it's just amazing. So thank you for sticking around. If you found the video useful, please like it, comment it if you've got any questions or you want to add any more to it. And as usual, do the subscribe click the bell and you'll get notifications as soon as I release any new videos. Thank you for watching and see you next time. Bye!